Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to uh, the last Green Monday of um, 2012. Uh, <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's been a very exciting year. Um, I just want to say thank you before we start tonight to our sponsors uh, who supported us through uh, thick or thin throughout 2012. We hugely appreciate um, your support. Uh, <clears throat> and we particularly uh, thank Linklaters tonight who have given us a venue a very short notice. And it's a, a lovely venue as well. So tonight we're really here to talk about ingenuity, the art of the possible, because we all know, everybody here knows we have a lot of challenges. We know that carbon emissions are at record levels. We know that youth unemployment is at record levels. We know that food prices uh, have risen by 35% in the UK in five years. So there's, most sustainability indicators are going the wrong way uh, for us which means we know we need a shift in momentum. <clears throat> and I think what's becoming very clear is that it's got to be business that creates that shift in momentum. If we look to what's going on in Doha at the moment, it's very clear that uh, this is a very challenging area for politicians uh, <clears throat> and that really it comes down to, to business. So business then has to ask itself, how does it invest its energy? How does it uh, create this momentum? And that's really... Um, the important question that we're asking tonight. Uh, the question really is, does business now need to engage in shifting mainstream opinion towards more sustainable choices? Does business need to close the green gap, as some call it? Because we're, we're a fickle bunch. 65% <clears throat> of us say we care about environmental and social issues uh, when we're asked in a survey, 10% of it of us factor it into our purchasing decisions, into our investment decisions, into our voting decisions. So we have this gap. <clears throat> and I think what's very clear is there are now two schools of thought that are emerging. One school says we now need to motivate the mainstream. We now need to do what business has always done very well, which is actually shift opinion. And then there's another group that says, <clears throat> actually, we kind of know what a lot of the solutions are, be they business models, be they new technologies. What we need is enlightened <coughs> leaders to, uh, to get on with it and, and deliver the change. So they're saying, we'll develop those products and services, and the mainstream will buy them because they're better. They will point to the internet and say, the internet wasn't demand-led. The internet was created by a few enlightened people, and then everyone adopted it. So we've got these two uh, schools of thought, and there are big ramifications for business strategies which camp you sit in. Because if you're thinking, OK, we need to collaborate, mo motivate, mobilize, we need people who are experts in communication, we'll be working across sectors with different companies. <clears throat> if you're in the other camp, you're probably thinking, this is innovations. I need uh, people who just can see change and can invest in it. We probably don't need to collaborate too much because, frankly, if we, if we develop the right products and services, we're going to do well. So Santa's come early tonight because we have uh, some fantastic speakers and commentators to uh, draw from, to learn from. Um, the format is, is a new format for us. It's not without uh, complications. Uh, it's going to challenge our panelists and, uh, and others, um, but that's good. We're here to innovate, and sometimes we screw it up, and sometimes we get it right, and that's, uh, that's our job. Um, but in terms of what, what you've got to see, you've got four <coughs> thought leaders will come up and speak one by one, and then they'll come back down again, and then once they've all spoken, they'll all come up and be joined by two commentators who will be looking at what they're saying from the perspective of uh, business and society. <coughs> Now, before I hand you over to them, I just want to see roughly where this audience sits on the question that we're looking at tonight. So the question is, <clears throat> which of the following do you regard as the, as the more effective way for the business community to create a change in momentum to deliver a sustainable economy? So you've got, on one hand, close the green gap, influence, uh, using business to influence the mainstream, uh, which will then create these uh, buying powers going through supply chains. The second group is get on with it, uh, enlightened leadership, 
<clears throat> using technologies and new ways of thinking, doing it regardless of where the mainstream is. Can I just get a show of hands for <clears throat> just roughly, and you can go for both if you want to. Uh, who, who would put themselves um, more in the camp of A at this stage? Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, probably about 15 there. Who would put themselves in the camp of B? Okay, we have a, we have a majority here. I'd say that's probably double or more um, are in B. Let's hand it over to the experts and see, uh, see how opinions change. So I'm going to um, <clears throat> tell you about our first speaker um, today who's not here with us. He's, um, he's not delivering uh, presents or anything exciting. He's, uh, he's actually in the States. Um, he's with us by audio, and we've pre-recorded his speech for technical reasons. It's Stephen Kotler. Um, <clears throat> so he is li listening to us now. Um, so I better get uh, his introduction correct. Um, <clears throat> but, and he cuts a controversial figure. He's written or co-written a book called Abundance. That book basically says the future is better than you think. And how radical is it to have an environmental book that says the future is better than you think. So I'm now going to uh, hand him over to the audio team and let's hear Stephen's story. <clears throat> 